What is up my friends? So let's talk about the Russian sleep experiment. So I've been meaning to do this video and I recorded it many times, but it just, the audio gets like wonky and it's, it's, been, it's been trash. That's all I'm gonna say. So hopefully this time I'm recording, it's gonna be good. And if it's not, you probably aren't even listening to this, but if you are, it came out good. So the Russian sleep experiment, a legend that's been around since I think the MySpace days, honestly, that's when I first saw it. So it's been around for quite some time, maybe even longer than that. And it's a creepy pasta that involves five test subjects being exposed to a sleep experiment where they are giving a stimulant in the Soviet area, Soviet, Soviet, Soviet? <laughs> Soviet era scientific program to see if they can stimulate soldiers to keep on fighting even with no sleep at all. So the story basically goes as follows. In the Soviet Union in the late 1940s, a military sanctioned scientific experiment with five political prisoners kept in a gas chamber is administered airborne stimulants for the purpose of keeping the subjects awake for 30 continuous days. I mean one day with no sleep is already enough to keep you like insane and i think i've read that it takes like five or four days of no sleep for you to pretty much have hallucinations before you pretty much go into insanity so 30 days could you imagine that anyways the prisoners are falsely promised freedom if they complete the experiment <laughs> they suppose and the subjects behave normally at first during the initial days talking to each other whispering to other researchers through the one-way glass it is noted that there's so that the subject of what they're talking about becomes darker as it progresses. I mean, as I said, insanity, right? After nine days, one subject begins screaming uncontrollably for hours while the others have no reaction to his outburst. The man screamed for so long that he tore his vocal cords. When a second begins screaming, the others prevent the researchers from looking inside by pasting torn book pages in their own feces on their porthole windows. So talk about living in your own shit, huh? After a few days without the researchers being able to look inside, during which the chamber is completely silent, the researchers use the intercom to test if the subjects are still alive and get a short response of a subject expressing compliance. So pretty much they're just like, well, we heard them. All right, let's continue. So on the 15th day, the researchers decide to turn off the simulate, stimulating glass and reopen the chamber. Upon looking inside, they discover that the four surviving subjects have performed lethal and severe mutilation and disembowelment on themselves during the past days. These acts including tearing off flesh and muscles, removing multiple abdominal and internal organs, practicing self-cannibalism, and allowing four inches of blood and water to accumulate on the floor. So talk about the experiment eating itself. The subjects also violently refused to leave the chamber and begged the scientists to continue administering the stimulant, murdering one soldier and severely injuring another who was attempting to remove them. After eventually being removed from the chamber, all subjects are shown to exhibit extreme strength, unprecedented resistance to drugs and sedatives, superhuman abilities to remain alive despite these lethal injuries and a desperate desire to remain awake and being given the stimulant. It's also found that any of the subjects who fall asleep die instantly. So these guys are pretty much like, give me the damn stimulant or else I'm gonna die. And it feels pretty good to have this. So superhuman um, experimentation gone wrong, definitely. After being treated for their injuries, the surviving three subjects are being prepared to return to the gas chamber with the stimulant, with EKG monitors showing short recurring moments of brain death. Before the chamber is sealed, one of the subjects falls asleep and dies, and one researcher draws a gun and kills another subject as well as a staff member. With only one surviving subject, the researcher asks what he is, to which the subject identifies himself as an inherent evil inside the human mind that is kept in check by the act of sleeping. The researcher shoots the prisoner in the head and then shoots himself, saying his final words. So, a very, very dark turn of events to something that was meant to be a stimulant turned to a pretty depressing story, right? So this story pretty much has been going around many times and the picture that accompanies it is more, I would say, famous than the story itself. So is this story real or not? Well, it's apparently just a urban legend. It's not real. There was no reports of this scientific experiment ever happening and it wouldn't uh, make sense for them to be alive with the 
massacre that happened in there during the time they were in there with internal organs out and all of that. So it's pretty safe to say it's fake as well as the creepypasta's image that originated with this is the grotesque demonic figure implied that this is what the subjects look like. It is actually a life-size animatronic Halloween prop called Spasm. So this is something you can definitely go out and find. And it, it's believed that there is like some sort of truth to this, that there might have been some experimentation with stimulants. As we know, during the wars, a lot of nations did use stimulants on their soldiers to keep them going for more hours than they usually would be able to go, but not for more days. So days definitely doesn't make sense, and it wouldn't have happened the way it sounds like it. I think that we would have gotten worse results quicker and not as fictionalized as they are here sort of kind of like a horror movie so this has been made into many adaptions because of its popularity and many of them include a novel that was uh, published in 2015 it is now out of print however so i don't know if you can go out and find that also a movie that was based on this by john fairley and released in 2019 and we also got a short story film based Starring Chris Catan with Barry Anderson directing. So pretty much the story keeps on going. And I think as social media evolves, it is one of those stories that will make its way anywhere. Because I've seen this everywhere. I've seen it on MySpace, as I said, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Twitter. I said Twitter already. I meant TikTok. And I think that we're just going to end up having this story circulate for many years to come. And it's just one of those stories, I think, that it is, like, insane. But you would kind of sort of have some believability towards it. Especially as things get crazier in the world and we uncover new truths about what actually happens. We start to wonder if these uh, tales of fiction are actually tales of fiction. Or are we told they're tales of fiction, but it's actually dark reality of it all. So, I don't know. I... I, I I'm just going based off on everything that we have in the facts. It is not a true story, but only time will tell. What do you think, however? Do you think something like this could have happened? Is it happening? Or would it ever happen? An experiment of this kind? I'd like to know what you think below. But anyways, if you haven't already checked out my other creepy video on Siren Head, I highly suggest you go check that one out. That was the one that started the series. And I think I released it like two weeks ago and I should have been on my third or fourth video by now but don't worry we're getting back to it I'm definitely have the next one already lined up and recorded just gotta edit it and put it out there for you so if you want more of these creepy stories or if you just want to hear me talk about movies TV show music anime video games all that stuff you love in pop culture then this is the channel for you so go ahead and subscribe right now if you haven't already we are on the road to 15,000 subscribers so close to getting there make sure you follow me on Twitter at nerdron for up-to-date news I'm gonna be more um, present on Twitter pretty soon as well and also my anchor anchor is where I post all of the videos you see on my channel in audio format so you can take it on the go Plus, I add extra content such as music, singles, and news, and all of that on there as well. Because here, I like to talk about big breaking news and music. And everything else in music goes on that Anchor over there. So go ahead and go check that out if you haven't already. I'll leave it below, anchor.fm slash nerdrun. But anyways, that's going to do it for me. As I said in all of my videos before, I do hope all of you are doing safe. And what are you right now binging? What are you watching? What are you listening to? Whether it's music, video games, music, TV shows, let me know below. Always looking for new recommendations. Make sure you're turning on that bell for notifications as well. I like to put some stuff on the community tab here and there. So you want to keep it uh, over there. So anyways, Russian sleep experiment. As I said, let me know your thoughts below. Do you think it's real? Do you think it could ever happen? Or do you think it's just a big tale of fiction? As I said, the biggest giveaway is that spasm um, animatronic is not one of the subjects. It's just an animatronic. But as I said, make sure you subscribe, turn on that bell for notifications whenever new videos drop. We got a couple videos coming out tomorrow and I'll see all of you next time. Stay positive. Well, stay safe and stay positive.